Another reason some workers make more money in the economy is labor unions. This, this used to be a lot bigger phenomenon in the private uh, labor market uh, that is non-governmental workers, uh, but unions have been losing their power steadily for, for decades, as, as the text has pointed out. Um, public employee unions, teachers unions, uh, government employees, um, still hold a lot of strength and, and have certainly used that strength to um, get, get higher, higher pay and better, better working conditions. Um, anyway, how, how does this work? Uh, let's, let's think a little bit about that. Oh, let me back up. I, I, uh, I see I started at my last slide. I gave it away. All right, labor unions. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, the way we think about labor unions it can be uh, captured in the, in the following example, just straight from the, the text. Uh, let's, let's suppose we had um, two sectors in the economy, sector one, sector two, total uh, employment there, and we're just going to have a, a vertical supply curve. That's how many workers are in the economy. Um, if, if that's the case, if, if we have 200 workers in the economy, they're all working a certain number of hours, then markets will clear at nine. Employers in sector two will hire up to the point where the, for the last worker hired, marginal product is nine. So too in sector one, and we have 125 workers in one, 75 in two, wages equalized. Let's suppose a union comes along and is able to um, gather, gather all the workers in sector one together uh, to, to act in, in unison. Uh, sector two is not unionized. Well, if that's the case, then the market changes. Let's suppose, just, just to keep numbers simple, and, and we'll use the numbers in the text indeed, very simple. Um, let's suppose that the union in sector one <coughs> extracts wage concessions from employers that drive wages up to 12 in that sector. And, uh, of course, employment would fall to 100 um, because there's a downward sloping demand curve in that sector. Uh, well, where are those other 25 workers going to go? There's only two sectors. They're going to go to sector two. Notice in that case, uh, wages in sector two are, are depressed even below the nine where they started. So this union, union phenomenon raises wages in sector one, uh, making those worker wagers higher, and depresses them in, in sector two. And that's, that's a simplified view of how uh, unions work. Now, this does create a, a puzzle um, for, for economists analyzing labor markets. Um, I'm going to turn to the next slide. The puzzle is for uh, sectors of the econom economy where there are some union workers and some non-union workers, how can the firms that employ union labor uh, compete? Because their wage costs are higher. And um, one answer to this is that uh, the unionized firms uh, do businesses for, for government. And uh, government, of course, is a big contractor and uh, in infrastructure projects in particular, and, and a lot of governments have a, a union only, uh, or at least a, a union wage rate requirement for when they bid out uh, contracts. But um, in other sectors, it creates a puzzle. Why, why would, uh, how would a, a firm employing union labor survive? And of course, we've seen um, a shrinkage in, in union labor and steel around uh, Gary, Indiana and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in autos around Detroit and uh, Flint, Michigan. Um, you know, the steel is now made increasingly uh, elsewhere. Uh, there are mini mills all around the country, but also China and Korea and elsewhere. Um, autos even made in the US, are, there's a lot of non-union plants now in the Southeast, so-called right to work uh, states. Um, but anyway, that economic naturalist presents just a little bit of uh, evidence on on this uh, on this point, and um, what Frank uh, captures in that that discussion is the the fact that in in unionized sectors the wage differences aren't as dramatic as depicted in that previous slide because uh, unions tend to employ the more skilled workers. Um, both they they have senior workers. 
but also the the union requires certification that that brings about a higher um, skill level in union workers. So really, that wage premium for union membership isn't so much reflecting the bargaining power of the union as it is the higher skill level of the union worker. And then, you know, that, that explains some of the practice. There's another uh, school of thought that suggests that union uh, in increasing the uh, level of employment between workers and, and bosses that they can actually make firms more productive. And, you know, this is a story that perhaps makes sense in some sectors of the economy. There's some unions that are pretty cooperative with management. There's others that are that are really not. And for, for an example of one that's not, uh, the, the Longshoremen's Union is, is notorious for being um, tough to work with, and, and they're the ones slowing, the, slowing shipments in the Port of Portland and, and up in uh, Washington to the point where uh, Portland, the, the Columbia River ports are an, on the verge of losing um, and have lost some big contracts already. Um, but uh, it, 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 anyway, this the, the, the higher productivity, the higher skill level of union workers and, and maybe that, that increased communication um, can explain why um, uh, firms employing union workers can stay in business.